In addition to the interactive widgets that I showed you in my last video, widgets can now also be configured using the app intents framework instead of the old intent definition file approach that I already showed you about two years ago in my full widget kit course. So today I've prepared this simple colored widget here that just consists of a single color, but when we press it, we can edit the widget, select an accent color here, we get a list of recommendations. I will just select blue in this case, go back, and then the widget will use that color internally. This is a very simple example, but I will go through it one step at a time. I've already laid all of this out. And then hopefully at the end, you're able to implement configurations using app intents for your own custom data types in your own widgets. So to get started, let me quickly show you the setup for the colored widget, and then we can jump right into our select color intent, which is the app intent that is being used to configure this widget. So the most important thing to get started with these app intent uh, configured widgets is to, instead of using, using an intent or static configuration, you're now using a app intent configuration. And for that, you can pass the intent that you're using and the timeline that you're using. The timeline also has to be an app intent timeline provider, not just a timeline or intent timeline provider. So very important that this is now a completely new uh, yeah, type for our timeline provider and for our um, configuration. You're now using the app intent configuration instead of the intent configuration. And then the rest of this setup is completely the same as always. I just added one little tidbit here that is also a new feature in iOS 17 because widgets can now have content margins, which is basically an inset to the widget on the side here. And using the content margins disabled modifier, I'm just getting rid of that. Now, in reality, I would be very careful using this modifier because, for example, if you're running your widget on watchOS, then it probably really makes sense to keep the content margins. There's also now a new view modifier that you can use to set the content margins for your views, but that is a topic for a different time. Right now, I just wanted to quickly go over it and show you that I'm using it. So important part is using an app intent configuration here. And in that configuration, we're using our app intent timeline provider, which I called color timeline. And in here, as for all timeline providers, there are three functions you need to implement, the timeline for configuration in context function, the snapshot for configuration in context function, and the placeholder in context function. Together with this colored timeline, app intent timeline provider, I have also created a colored entry, which is just a timeline entry, and that has a date, which is required for timeline entries, and a widget color, which is a custom type that I have defined for my select color intent, which I will show you in a second. But this is basically the color that the user is selecting and we're then passing into our widget timeline provider here. And through that into the timeline entry and into our colored widget view. So this colored entry, very simple, a date and a widget color, which I will show you in a second. So for our timeline provider in the placeholder function, I'm just creating a placeholder colored entry for right now with one of my mocked widget colors. For the snapshot, I'm just taking the current date and the color that is configured in our select color intent, which we will have a look at in a second. And then for the timeline, I'm doing the exact same thing. So I'm just grabbing the selected color from our intent using the current date. And I'm saying we don't need to ever refresh this timeline. I will handle that myself because in this example, there's no data displayed in the widget. It's just a color. So there's really no reason to ever reload our timeline. It will get automatically reloaded when the user um, changes the configuration of the widget, or we can manually, manually reload it through widgetcenter.share.reload timeline in our app or any other place. And then the view is also very simple, takes our colored entry and displays the selected widget color. So let's have a look at our select color intent. And I will go through this one by one because we actually have three types defined in this file here. 
So let's start with the app intent itself. And it's very important that this is not just conforming to the app intent protocol. It actually has to conform to the widget configuration intent protocol because we want to use this intent for a app intent widget configuration. For these widget configuration intents, there are two required attributes, which is the title, which is a localized string resource. In this case, I just called the intent widget accent color and then a bit of a longer intent description. I just said select widget accent color. Those can be strings, whatever you want them to be very much depends on your app. Just know that you have to implement a title and a description as static variables on your widget configuration intent. And then I also added a parameter because of course, uh, why would I want to configure a widget using an intent that has no parameters? So in our case, the parameter, I called it accent color and that title there is what's being displayed right here. I don't think you can ever see the intent title and description when you're just using it for your widget configuration. But anyway, so this is the accent color parameter and this thing over here that I can select is my widget color. Widget color is a custom type that I defined. Of course, you could also use built-in types like, like string, bool, int and so on, but I wanted to have a custom type here. And instead of trying to conform the Swift UI color type, to this app entity protocol, which is needed to use your own custom types with um, app intents. I just created a widget color. So this widget color is very simple. It has an ID, which is required, and it then has a color, which basically is the translation of widget color into our switch UI color that we are then using inside of the actual widget background. There are a few things here that are required. So the identifier is required, the type display representation is required, and the default query is required. The default query is the way that our app can provide options for the user to select from. So I will show you my widget color query in a second, but this is where we got the red, blue, and orange recommendations or selections from. And this is also where I defined which color is the default select or is selected by default when creating this widget. You then also have to implement a display representation, which basically is the string that is displayed right here in the selection menu. And I'm just showing the ID because I'm using ID as a name parameter basically. So I've uh, created some mocked data here. This is absolutely not needed. You can completely get rid of this if you're actually um, loading these um, these options here from your app, from the network, whatever. I'm just mocking it here because I don't want to implement a network request just for this tutorial. So in the mock data, I just have red, blue, and orange, and there I always added the ID string, which is the one that's shown right here through the display representation. And then the actual Swift UI color, which is then used inside of the widget background. All right, so the last thing missing is our entity query. And just as a reminder, we're associating that query with our app entity through this default query static variable here, which is required. All right, so the entity queries need to implement three functions. Default result, which is basically the entity that is um, selected by default when the widget is first added. This is optional but you still have to implement this function. Suggested entities, which is the list of full entities over here. And then there's also entities for identifiers in case this list is longer and the user actually has a search screen to go through everything. Now, this is not part of this example, but you could actually see that in my old video on the old intense framework for widget kit. So in here, you just get a list of IDs. This is our entity.id, so in this case, just a string representing the color. So what I'm doing is I'm just filtering my demo data by whether the, this identifiers array here contains uh, the color. So very simple stuff. But this 
um, entity query right here. These two functions, or probably even these three functions, are where you would do your network request, read data from Swift data or core data or user defaults or wherever you're getting your data from. So this is where you can actually um, yeah, load the data that the user can then select to configure your widget. And that is basically already everything. So just to show you, let me also select red here real quick and then go back, which it will get reloaded automatically. And now it's showing the red color because we're showing the entry dot widget color dot color, which comes from our um, configuration dot accent color and the configuration comes from our select color intent. So this is actually very simple setup. And from learning about it to implementing this widget, I needed a maximum of 30 minutes. So this should be very easy to do for yourself. And I think uh, the app intense approach here is a thousand times nicer than the old intent definition file approach.